Welcome to Hail Varsity Radio, the voice of Husker Nation. Insight, opinion, expertise, with the biggest and best names talking Nebraska across the state. Join the show on Twitter at Hail Varsity and at Schmitz underscore radio. Call in at 402-466-ESPN or 1-800-825-5865. Here's Chris Schmitz. Welcome to it. Great to be with you on a Wednesday. It's Hale Varsity Radio presented by the Nebraska Lottery Midweek Edition. Chris Schmidt, Elijah Herbal. Plenty to get into with some open practice to discuss. Uh, walking wounded and watching wounded, more like it. But uh, plenty to react to with Nebraska. Mike Babcock going to be with us. We'll dive into some Oscar football and Big Red Baseball with uh, Babbers. Coming up, Mike Schuhart, Wilderness Ridge Golf. And it is Masters Week, and we'll hear from Shuey on that this hour. Big Ten uh, insight from Rick Pizzo. There's a little Big Ten buffet and plenty of room for you also to dial us up. 466-3776-466-3776-800-825-5865. Can uh, find us on Twitter. Give us a follow. Chris Schmidt at Schmidt underscore radio at Herbal Essence for Elijah Herbal. And uh, always email Chris at HaleVarsity.com. So th- there are some themes here with this spring practice, right? We talk about optimism. We talk about excitement. Uh, you're going to be able to go if you can get us some tickets. And I still think there's tickets available for the spring game. You have uh, an older team. And a lot of that is because of guys coming back with that super senior tag. So you've got experience, guys that have been through it time and time again, not just with spring ball, but uh, a, a lot of years in the Big Ten that are going to be back to lead your defense. You've got some younger guys that are are really high level recruits that seem to be doing well. Turner Corcoran's a guy that that comes to mind, right? That wow, you you got a good one, and it's just a game, but he continues to impress. Ty Robinson, we'll hear from him. He's uh, he's a guy that was a high level dude that is is adding. Uh, to that experience belt, so to speak. And you know what? You feel fine about certain areas. But Elijah, we'll hear from Scott Frost as he took uh, about three minutes or so after practice today to to touch on, you know, some of the guys that are out. We, we've hit on it this week, and it's been on our mind. You know, how does the Nebraska offense get better? How does the Nebraska offense make a jump in the Big Ten, we know special teams has been emphasized. Great, but you need your offense to be part of that solution uh, when it comes to, to ball games and and how do you go about scoring more points and being more efficient? It's going to be that run game. Yes, that's on the offensive line, but you need to to kind of settle in on some backs. And, and as we talk right now, you had three backs watching and and one one big puzzle piece. In marquee step, that's going to be out the, the the rest of the spring and should be back by this fall. But man, uh, it's nice that he's here. It'd be better that he was doing rather than actually watching, and that's tough news for him. Yeah, and Marquis Step is a guy that you expected to step right into a pretty much a starting role with this running back spot. And being a transfer, you think. It, it's always be better for him to get more reps in the spring, get more time behind the offensive line. I mean, there's just as much as there's a relationship between a left tackle and a left guard playing up front. There's a relationship between the offensive lineman and the running back, knowing to be patient. Like I can run behind this hole. I know we've repped this play a hundred times in practice. I know this hole is going to open up. It might open up late, but I can be patient on this play. And there's a, just a very special relationship to that. And I think it's going to hurt Marquis Steps' development within the offense that he has to miss spring ball. And, and that it ain't his fault. It, no. it, it's tough news for him. And you know he had battled injuries at SC when he's healthy. He was good, and he just got to go back to the SC Notre Dame game, right? I mean, when the guy's healthy and right, he is a a very physical back that can be a difference maker and that can hammer away, right? And and think about the, the, the good running games in college football and in the NFL. When Nebraska's been great, yes, they've had a staple of talent, but they've also had the guy. And a lot of places are 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 forced to go by committee and man you want somebody to emerge 
and the guy that you thought, because of his experience, because of the level of ball he played, because of the schedule he played against, you thought Marquis Step, and he still can be that guy. But you are so on it with just knowing one another, that offensive line unit, and then your your running back just kind of feeling each other out, knowing the personality, right? What's the personality of the O-line if we're going up the A-gap or going B-gap, C-gap, whatever it is, uh, just getting that familiarity. And, man, it's – Nebraska just – they just can't seem to win right now with the running back spot. And I'm not trying to be drama queen here. It's it's a big deal. Here's Scott Frost as he kind of listed off some of the guys that are dinked. Was really impressed with the spirit of practice today. There was a lot of competitiveness going on, seeing some good things. So we got a lot of work to do, but we're taking good steps. Just wanted to address, since you guys were there, a few of the injury things. We got a few guys that are out for spring, but we're expecting back for fall. Stilly, Step, Mueller. Uh, with Tucky, Douglas, um, and Buford, I had to have a surgery. Are going to miss the rest of spring, but we expect them back. The rest of the guys are out, just kind of normal spring ball bumps and bruises and things of that nature. So should get them the rest of everybody back uh, relatively quickly. So a little bit more on on Marquis Step here from the head man. He's out for the rest of spring. He'll be back fall, uh, but it's an injury thing that uh, he didn't know he had, and he showed up to us with. So listen, th- that that's tough. And I know that you go back to 2019, Step dealt with a lot of turf toe issues at SC. Uh, you have to have a surger, surgical procedure. I'm not going to dive into to playing, you know, doctor here, but I don't know if it's something that started with a, a, a turf toe that grew into something worse because you're not giving yourself time to rest, right? You're You're constantly putting some 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 weight and some mileage on that right foot and and, and what i know about turf toe is is it would sound i mean he's made it through the first couple practices of spring it sounds like which is consistent with a turf toe Mm -hmm. in which you show up first day you feel fine next day it's a little bit sore day after that it's more sore and then you realize you know what got an issue here and we got to get it dealt with that that's what makes sense here considering he did play in the first couple or did participate in Mm -hmm. the first couple practices right and and he's a guy that you know what he's tough he's going to grind through it and just try and do his thing And the best case now was to have a procedure done, and there you go. Uh, You'll be ready for the fall. You'll be ready to be back during the summer. But uh, that's that's just – it hurts right now when it comes to to getting the reps. And, look, he's ran what Nebraska is going to run. He's carried the football – with the same play, the outside, the inside zone. He's he's done that a thousand times in his life. But you talk about the translation – it's different language from USC to Nebraska. It's not the same title name uh, for the same play you've run since high school. Last thought here from Frost on on step with that return date. He was asked about it towards the end of his, his quick media session. He'll be back this summer. So, uh, again, this is something that he didn't know about, we didn't know about when he came in, and I think it's in his best interest to get it fixed to give him uh, the best chance to be at his best. So, okay, so the, the reps that step – we're going to have now go where? And as as we look at the, the list of guys out today, and I don't know how long uh, Ramir Johnson has been out. He was in street clothes today. Uh, I know Sevian Morrison, it, by reports, wasn't there. So that's two backs. You, feel, you, you hear good things about the potential for Morrison. Ramir's been in the program a while, and he's a guy – based on his experience could take some <laughs> um could take you know a next step in this offense cuz he had he had a nice game against Iowa that's not a pushover team to to get a touchdown against right but you have such a small sample size with the rest of these backs with the stable but this does open up an opportunity to a guy that's wild and a lot of the young kids the early enrollees have impressed the coaching staff Gabe Urban's one of those guys he's a name we've talked about he's a name we've heard about and he's a guy that we think okay even as young as he is he's got the right mentality and he could make a push to not only is he here to, to to soak it all in, but we'll see what he does with this spring experience as he moves forward in his young career. Coach Frost touched on on Gabe Irvin and what maybe he could do. 
I, I got to say, overall, our our newcomers, uh, guys that should still be in high school or transferred here, I've been really impressed with. Um, Gabe Urban is definitely one of the leaders of that. He just has an approach like a pro. He acts like a grown-up, gets in the huddle and encourages and competes. And overall, I, you know, that group of guys that came in here new, I'm seeing a lot of really good things from. So, you know, some of the guys are swimming. They should still be in science class and at prom and high school track meets. So they're catching up. But overall, really impressed with the group that came in. So you're a third of the way home here in spring football. This offense has plenty of room to grow. Uh, just some of the observations, checking in with the folks from Hale Varsity. I did not get to go to practice this morning. I was finishing up my shift on KFOR, which is fine. You saw a lot of deep balls. You saw kind of a wow moment from Xavier Betts uh, getting by uh, Joseph for a for a big time score. Uh, some mixed reviews on on the the passing, not necessarily on Adrian per se, but you saw more work. Uh, with the, the the deep ball part of the offense, that's good. But with this run game, man, to, to, to alleviate a lot of the pressure on the quarterback and to open up what you want to do with that deep play action, you need to find a running back. And they have dudes on campus, but you need them available. And it, it's just one day. You hope things clear up for the rest of the running back room and you get to see more reps and more practice out of Ramirez. Same with Morrison. The good news is, though, is you got a guy like Irvin that seems to get it even at an early age to help contribute to this. Right now it's unsettled. Yeah, but I'd say look back at the the Nebraska running backs who have made a difference in their time here. I think back to Rex Burkhead, Amir Abdullah, Marlon Lucky. Those ones I think back to in Roy my Hallou, life. Right? Roy Hallou. They were all making impact as a – freshman redshirt freshman type player Mm -hmm. which is which is early in their career and and you could see early on ah this guy's got i remember amir abdullah's kickoff turn touchdown even when he wasn't getting reps as a running back (laughs) kind of saved everyone's ass against fresno state yeah and rex burkhead was getting was getting reps as a freshman too uh seeing the field out he know he wasn't starting uh, at that time but he was at least he had a role he had roles i'm pretty sure he had a rushing touchdown or two that season so you you could see that these guys had what it took to be the running back at Nebraska. And I haven't seen a guy specifically stand out in my memory that's on the roster right now that I went, ah, this guy's got it. I mean, you had the flashes from a guy like Ramir Johnson. Mm -hmm. Um, We've heard good things about Gabe Irvin. I'm excited to see him in the spring game. But I'm waiting for that guy to to pop off uh, off the screen and, and say... It make me say, yeah, that guy's got it. That guy's got the speed I'm looking for. That guy knows how to hit a hole. I'll say this, though. We have not seen enough of a sample size. I'll say it again because what did you see last fall, right? You, you saw a little bit of Scott, and then you didn't see much of Scott, right? I mean, minimal touches. You saw a lot of Ramirez on the road against Maryland two years ago. You saw him a little bit against Iowa. Didn't see Morrison at all, you know, due to due to some COVID stuff. And and what did you have last year? I mean, y- you had a, a running game that was good, but you had a dinged up Mills. And when Mills was fine, Nebraska seemed to be fine. But I mean, Mills tried to gut it out with a with a knee issue. So you have recruited guys on paper that are pretty high-level performers. You've won some recruiting battles. You get a grad transfer in marquee step, and, and what happens? You, you have a situation where he's dinged. But let's just go back to, to being snake bit for a moment at the running back spot. You inherited Ziggy, right? And, and he really just kind of forced his hand as he kept grinding and had a great senior season. He's still in the league. He's still with Jacksonville. But, but Bell didn't pan out. Mo didn't pan out. You've got some guys that are on campus that you're waiting. To, I don't think it's a talent issue. I really don't. But I think there's a high bar to, to emerge uh, to play running back at Nebraska. And, and that's okay to make that the ask to get uh, the majority of the carries. And even back to this offense, they've used different guys for different setups, right? It's not been a one-two punch like the Falcons had during their their Super Bowl season. Or it wasn't a Roy and a Rex punch. Or it wasn't a a Rex and an Amir one-two, right? So I don't know that Nebraska's got a guy at, at that level on campus that you alluded to. But they've got guys that are beyond serviceable. 
uh, when you look at the, the talent in the room. You just got to see it now on the field, and they got to be available. They got to be available on the field, and it seems like the injury bugs have been feasting here this spring. Yeah, and I'm going to bring this all the way back around to step because I think back to, to two years ago, Dedrick Mills didn't start off the season strong, but as he got more reps with the offense, as he got more just carries, more comfortable, uh, more more comfortable, he started figuring out the offense. He started, as I said, learning that offensive line uh, and, and forming the relationship with him. And I wondered. Maybe if Step got a spring, he could have stepped right into that role early in the fall and be there. But now we're going to have to to wait and see whether he's going to be able to step into that role right away in the fall or if it's going to take some time to get the uh, the relationships built up. Well, it's going to take him, A, being healthy, not re-injuring, you know, and and then what work can you do on your own with your crew during the summer so you can kind of hit the ground running in the fall. There's still time. It's not panic time with, with Step's injury, but it is a it is a big time setback for that running back room because he's the guy that you felt good about and then you could figure out where Irvin's at and then the rest of the crew that's been here, Morrison, Johnson, uh, Tompkins, right? Tompkins is has elite ability despite some injuries and they got to they gotta find a way to keep him on the field and, and healthy to go because you've seen him sparingly. We'll dive into some Husker baseball, more spring football thoughts. Mike Babcock coming up. A tale of our city. We're presented by the Nebraska Lottery. And now, and now back to Hale Varsity Radio. Some thoughts on the Masters coming up. Mike Shuhart, Wilderness Ridge. Some Big Ten takes from Rick Pizzo. Getting some spring ball with Rick as well and some Husker baseball now. And Big Red football, spring style with Mike Babcock, historian, author, Hall of Famer with Hale Varsity Magazine, HaleVarsity.com. Follow Mike on Twitter at MD Babs. Babbers, let's dive into the running back and injury situation. Uh, your reaction to the step news today. Yeah, you guys kind of covered that, but that, that was the thing. That was the biggest thing that came out of, the, uh, out of it today for me um, because I really thought that he was going to be a guy that would have an immediate impact. And, and he probably he still could, but. Um, if, if you've got to wait till fall camp, uh, and and the indication was that he, you know, they felt like he would be, he'd be ready to go at some point in the summer. But um, I, I just don't know if fall camp's enough. I mean, I thought it was just a really a positive that he got here for the spring. Um, he was going to go through spring practice and then have the opportunity to go through fall camp um, at, to just. Just learn the system. I don't think that you know his abilities in question, but mm-hmm. but the adjustment to a system is is really important, and this is a this is really a, a difficult thing for him, uh, not being able to go through spring and for the team, obviously, um, and for the running back room because competition never hurt anybody. So mm-hmm. um, the other guys would have benefited from that as well, I think. No, you nailed it. And in and, and your time covering Nebraska, and Elijah and I kind of look back to, you know, the, the last great year. And we, we, we talk about Amir. We talk about Rex. We talk about Roy. And even going further back to the Weebacks, Brown and Calvin. And uh, I look at Kenny Clark and Keith Enzo and Jones. I mean, you can go through three decades and beyond of just dudes, Solich had uh, in the running back room. And then even going through the different head coaches, right? I mean, Nebraska's always had a back to carry the mail or two or three. And I want your take on just the the development. What what's what are the, the snags that occur from getting a guy on the field that, okay, wow, he's fast, he's elusive, he can he can uh, shake and bake side to side, and man, that second step, he can get, he can accelerate. So we know that the traits of a high level athlete carry in the football, but it, it just feels like there's there's a lot of hurdles to getting on the field, and then just getting lathered up to to get consecutive carries. Well, yeah, and it, you know we've seen. I mean, we felt like that there have been that the, there's been talent in the room. But we just haven't seen anybody, you know, step up among these young guys. You know, and you listed them off there. I thought it was interesting that you know that uh, uh, the freshman uh, Irvin. Irvin got, yeah. you know, got some got some praise today. Um, you know, and, and 
So does that carry over throughout the spring, and does that carry into the fall? Um, because we heard some things, you know, like that about Ramirez Johnson, uh, and and he's a, a little banged up right now. But uh, I think Ronald Tompkins was coming off injury when he got here, you know, and that sort of impacted him. Uh, Marvin Scott, uh, the third, the, you know, he had some uh, he had some opportunity, but then you know, like you said, it kind of faded away. Uh, Sylvia Morrison didn't play. It seems like there, there's talent. Somebody, somebody needs to step up, you know, and, they, and we just haven't seen that from the young guys yet, even though there's, a, there, there's obviously a lot of competition, or there should be a lot of competition in the room if everyone's healthy, and that's the thing that, that is kind of a, a head-scratcher to me. Although you look at the way offenses have, have evolved, from the time that we're talking about, you know, that where the eye back was just totally the focus of the offense, and that was kind of the emphasis of it. It's not quite the same now with the offense. And, uh, you know, you, you even see it at all levels. You see it in the NFL. I mean, running backs are less of a priority. It, it all becomes the quarterback, mm-hmm. you know. You start with that, and then you work down from there. But uh, uh, I, I think that's a, there's an element of that, too, in the college game probably is that it's not quite the same as the time that if you go back far enough but but certainly Nebraska needs to have I think needs to have somebody uh, despite the amount of talent there needs to have somebody that can step up and take the majority of the carries and, and sort of set the tone Mike, when I look like at the history of the Big Ten, I mean, the, the Big Ten running backs through history, those those powerful downhill running backs, I mean, the, the perfect example, that would be Ron Dane uh, back in the day at, at Wisconsin. And, and now I see, you know, a variety of different backs finding success in the Big Ten from I mean, even at Wisconsin itself. It seems like they have a different style of back uh, every single year. And you saw that this year at Ohio State with a guy like J.K. Dobbins and Master Teague as, as a backup, two different styles. Do you think that that's what Scott Frost is going for at Nebraska? Or do you think he's still just trying to figure out what style of running back he needs in his offense to make it work in the Big Ten? Well, I think he had an idea of what he wanted. And I don't know if he's adjusted that idea or not. And, you know, part of that is, you know, as we always talk about, it's part of that is it starts up front. You know, the guys up front, and I think you feel pretty good about that going into the spring um, with the guys coming back and the competition there and the, the youth, really, uh, and the offensive line. But that's where it starts if you're going to be able to do that. But then you have to have somebody that can take advantage of it. So, you know, I, I think that, you know, initially, didn't Scott say something or uh, Bill Moose, somebody said that, Big Ten's going to have to adjust to Nebraska. I think Nebraska's making the adjustment mm-hmm. to the Big Ten, and that's probably one of the ways to do it. Um, and, and, you know, to be successful, you got to to uh, to play the way the other, other teams do. And it, it has implications in on your defense as well because you're practicing against that uh, every day, and, and uh, it, it really helps. So, um, yeah, I, th- I think that that's probably the approach that they're looking for. you got to find somebody. Uh, that can fill that role, but uh, uh, so far they just haven't had anybody step up. Mike, uh, other other kind of obse- uh, observations, reactions from today, uh, from from what you're able to gather with this open session. Well, you know, the one thing, and this is, I don't know if I'm making more of it than it is, but when he came here, I thought Omar Manning was just going to be a, exceptional, you know, because mm-hmm. of his credentials in junior college. And now I understand he's a little bit banged up again. And it seems like he's just been plagued with injuries from the time he's got here. And, uh, you know, again, it wasn't a – people didn't make a big deal out of it, but it, it was like, uh, you know, is he, is he not on the field again? I mean, he needs to he's – a, he's a guy like Steph that needs to be out there and get an opportunity to get reps in, in practice so that uh, he can do what we expected him to do on uh, in, in games. And, uh, uh, you know, the, the receiver room is kind of the same way, I think. We're looking for guys to step up. And uh, uh, that's, you know, I didn't see a whole lot of discussion about that, but that, that's one of the things that I think is really uh, important for this offense to work. Just as important as, a, as a, somebody to step up in that running back room, you've got to have a, some receivers that – Establish themselves and say these are the guys, you know, because that now they lost Wandale, they lost JD two years ago, and they lost, um, 
you know, a really talented guys there. Um, man, they lost the captain uh, in uh, Cade Warner, but um, so yeah, that was one of the that's one of the areas that still that I'm interested in this spring is is receiver and and who steps up and I and I really thought Manning would be one of those guys. Still time, but you're right. You want to see more about oh wow, he did this on the field versus well he's watching everybody on the field and then you know adrian's saying and doing all the right things the o-line you feel better about but man you need the, the rest of the skill spots to to make it work to give help to your quarterback and to to, to make that o-line what, what they've been kind of grinding toward work as well whether it's guys getting separation more time for the quarterback or a run game to to help open up the pass game and, and vice versa. You need someone to throw it to and get separation. Mike, uh, some baseball thoughts. Uh, had a chance to, to to check out Will Bolt's presser today, and so as we are into April, surprised or not that Nebraska is leading the Big Ten? Well, um, I guess I shouldn't be from what you know what the things that were said going into the season, but I'm always a little bit skeptical, you know, because mm-hmm. coaches are really optimistic. Uh, typically going into a season, but the way Nebraska has played, um, and it, you know, there's a little bit of concern. I think the the pitching, the starting pitching, didn't exactly distinguish itself over the weekend. But um, yeah, I really think that Nebraska's had yeah, various guys have been productive offensively. Uh, they've used various uh, lineups. They got a lot of uh, options. The defense has continued to be pretty good. Um, I think it's. Uh, it still ranks uh, among the top five nationally in, in defense, and and so you've got the elements there um, that uh, can make you successful. And you know, if if what Will Bolt says and what we've seen so far is accurate, you know, this is a team that just goes out and grinds. And uh, uh, one of the players, uh, I forget which one it was, after the uh, last series, was asked about you know Nebraska being successful, maybe it was after the winning streak, mm-hmm. um, in the seventh game, and said, you know, we don't pay attention to that. We don't pay as game to game. And, you know, I don't think those were just words, And I, but I think it has to be an attitude that you have to take. It's game by game. And he said, we'll leave the, the, the wins and losses to reporters. You know, they can <laughs> they can ask those questions, but, but we don't pay attention to it. And I thought it was a, a sincere comment. Yeah, Mike, this week, Nebraska found themselves in the others receiving votes category of a few different uh, major polls, uh, ranking the, the top 25. How long has it been since Nebraska has been in the top 25? But then kind of just as a follow up to that, can they continue that momentum? I know the, the real meat and potatoes of their Big Ten schedule is still yet to come. Yeah, the, the, you're right. That's the thing. There, there is a lot of uh, there's a lot to happen here yet before the season is over. I can really tell you. That's a good question. I, I couldn't really tell you when Nebraska was, um, you know, might have uh, flickered in there and out uh, a time or two, but um, not since they were consistently in the uh, in the in the NCAA uh, uh, playoffs and and uh, having an opportunity a couple times to go to the College World Series. But yeah, it's been a while. But uh, you know, I, again, I think that there was expectation here. Um, and, uh, you know, I really think that uh, Will Bolden and his staff have done a good job of recruiting and bringing in the players. And look at the number of young guys that have planned for them. And I think uh, the 12 guys have played for the first time this season at Nebraska. So um, that, there's a good mix there. They're doing a good job of integrating those guys. Mike Babcock with us, Hail Varsity Magazine, HailVarsity.com. Some big red baseball there. And uh, some spring football thoughts at MD Babs on Twitter. Babbers, have a great weekend and uh, enjoy that Nebraska Maryland series. We'll catch up next week. Thanks so much for your time today. Hey, great talking to you guys. Thanks a lot. All right, there he is, Mike Babcock, with us. Good to hear from him. And uh, Maryland's got some arms, so it'll be a good test for the uh, Husker offense. Masters thoughts, Mike Shuhart, Wilderness Ridge next. And we're back. Fellas, I think we could. Listen to the radio listen. on Hale Varsity Radio, presented by the Nebraska Lottery. Yes, that's awesome. Thanks for hanging out. Hale Varsity, presented by the Nebraska Lottery. Chris Schmidt, Elijah Herbal. It is Masters Week. He's probably got a green jacket on right now. We say hi to Mike Shuhart, Wilderness Ridge Golf. 
Shuey, uh, it's an awesome time of year, and uh, we'll get into some master's thoughts in just a second. But uh, need to get your your, your takeaway here with uh, just what you've been up to, man. It's uh, it's golf season. It's been incredible weather. Not necessarily today, but man, some big things going on out at Wilderness. Yeah, man, it's Masters Week. This is the best week of the year. It is. Get a, get a cocktail Masters. and watch it out on the deck, baby. Exactly. And that always, Masters Week always means that is the beginning of the golf season. That means golf is going to be played every day for the next months. Love it. Mm. It is good. Uh, reaction, uh, when I was 16, I probably drove 85 and a 45, but <laughs> it had been, uh, no. it's been, it's been since then. What's your takeaway with with, uh, the uh, L.A. County Sheriff uh, releasing just how fast Tiger was going? I was kind of surprised they released that, but I heard 90 miles an hour. It's just shy of it, yeah. Yeah, and he hit hit a tree going 75. Yeah. So what the heck? No good. No good. No good is, is right. Lucky to be alive, but glad he's alive for sure. No reason you should be dri- dri- driving 90 miles an hour, unless you're in a race car, which he's not, so not quite sure what's going on there. Yeah, you, you wake up late and you're trying to get to your, uh, your your documentary thing. I'm not making excuses. I'm, I'm <laughs> You're just, oh, no, and let's haul, you know, what to, to where we need to be and uh, what happened happened. So it's going to be weird without Tiger, but uh, let's get your thoughts here on, on who you like for the uh, 2021 Masters, and are you thinking new blood, or are you thinking a past champion this weekend? Well, I got a dark horse, okay. and then I got a uh, just a normal guy. Not really normal, but Patrick Reed. Okay. He always plays, he's always tough there, you know, Mr. Superman that nobody likes. That's true. <laughs> so, you, gotta, you always root for the guy you hate. And then uh, Matt Wallace. Tell me about Wallace. What do you love about Wallace? Matt Wallace, young guy, European guy. He's he's been playing good for the last year and a half. And, you know, those guys, those European guys always has a tendency to sneak right in there and and perform pretty well. So that's going to be my dark horse horse pick this year. Now, now Mike, when we talked to you about – Five months ago, before Masters 2020, you said, I got a good feeling about DJ this weekend, uh, and and he was your pick to win it all. And and guess what? DJ had an awesome weekend, uh, and he did win it all in 2020. Are you feeling just as confident with with this year's pick, or should I I take it to the bank, or or or, 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 is is it not the same this time around? Chewy gets his 15%, Elijah. You realize that. (laughs) That's right. (laughs) So, I don't know. This this year is going to be a little more wide open. I mean, there's it's kind of a small field. Um, you got your also rands, but each one's got their kind of their issues coming in. You know, it's always tough to back to back in the Masters. Mm. So just because of all the stuff that you have to do, so that's why I don't really like DJ. Too many too many distractions. Trying to get ready for the tournament, it's hard to get prepared. Being the past champion, um, so and the, and. I don't know. I mean, but the Masters also has guys that just have a track record there. They always seem to play really well there every year. You know, that's one of the reasons I like Patrick Reed. You know, he's a he's a grinder. Nobody likes him. He doesn't like anybody, you know, and he, he just goes out and wins the tournament just because nobody wants him to. Let's spend a second on Bryson DeChambeau. He, 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 he did really well driving at Augusta. But he finished 34th in November. Mike Shuart with his Wilderness Ridge. What are some common mistakes guys make at Augusta that just cause them to perish? Well, they don't miss the ball on the right side of the hole. I mean, you, <laughs> I you, you. Have, yeah, you have to be so patient and be smart where you play a lot of your second shots to. Mm-hmm. And I just I heard him talking in an interview just about that and about how much smarter he will be this time around, you know, because of his length and having short irons in, that doesn't mean you still can't be and have to be super patient and strategic on where you leave the golf ball. That's the whole key. 
you have to leave the ball in the right spot. Because if you get the ball in the wrong spot, man, there's nothing you can do on some of those greens. So I, I anticipate him playing really well this week, too. Guy that, that is kind of near and dear to my family's heart, Tony Finau, because he tolerated playing 18 with my dad <laughs> down in Arizona a few years back before Tony got, got to be Tony. He has been so consistent with top 10 finishes the past three years. What's, what's been missing for him? Obviously the finish, but, but why has he been unable to, to make that next step? I don't know. I mean, he's put himself there many times. So uh, he's, he's a little suspect putter. Okay. And that, that always, that, that golf course, you got to putt so well there. And if you're kind of a little suspect in your putting, um, it'll jump up and bite you every time. Mike Schuart's with us, Wilderness Ridge Golf. And uh, get to Shuey not only for a fitting, but for some lessons and golf season kicking off. Going to be amazing weather this weekend here locally. And we'll all have our eyes tuned to Augusta National again. And it's nice to have it. Uh, not so. We we had a, a different feel in Masters in November, but we're getting one uh, again here. Shuey, uh, going to step away from golf and a guy you're, you're close with. And know well, Tim Miles, his press conference going on right now for San Jose State. What's your takeaway with uh, with Timmy uh, getting uh, getting another gig now uh, back in the Mountain West? Good for him. I mean, he's a he's a basketball coach, and that's what he loves to do, and that's what he wants to do. So, super happy for him. Seeing he got an opportunity, he sounds like he's got his hands full in mm-hmm. that job. But yeah, you know, he'll do a great job there. He'll get him. Playing halfway decent. Shuey, uh, folks can come see you. Give folks the rundown here, not only from fitting, but also equipment, uh, lessons, and then, of course, uh, about a minute here, the youth program that's uh, just incredible at Wilderness. Yeah, we kind of s- submitted all of our youth programs are out there. So uh, if you have any kids that want to get in any of our programs, give us a holler. We can put them in the right program. We got our fittings. I got a Titleist fitting next week, Mizuno, Ping, so it's that time of the year. So you can sign up for any of our fitting days, anything that you're looking for, and uh, we'll hook you up. I played Saturday, and, and I think I lost 45 balls. Oh, no. Yeah, but they, you know, <laughs> they, they were some of the recycled kind. So <laughs> we, we just, we just kind of got them out of our system, Shuey. Just. Kind of got them out of the bag, lighten up the bag. You had too many in there. But I went Jedi mind trick and actually putted well. And I know. And you're like, yeah, what's well mean? I love it. You got to start doing that uh, that drill that Deshambo was doing yesterday, just speed hitting all his drives on the the, the driving range. You see that? Yeah. yeah. I need, what was that all about? I don't know. I need I need I need Deshambo's body fat. Uh, <laughs> plan is what i need shuey uh, enjoy the masters thanks for jumping on buddy we'll talk next week all right everybody enjoy the masters you too bud we'll take talk care to you next week all right mike shuey our wilderness ridge golf will wind down hour one at hail varsity presented by the nebraska lottery and now and now back to hail varsity radio 10 minutes away rick pizzo big 10 buffet with us rick's done a lot of PGA coverage in his career. We'll talk some Husker baseball with him, some spring football thoughts with Mr. Pizzo. Maybe a little wrap to the basketball season, so we'll go everywhere with him. Some thoughts from Deontay Williams coming up. Husker senior safety. Some uh, pretty telling commentary on uh, why he's back and just what uh, his expectations are. Also some cool stuff from Ty Robinson after practice, so uh, some more thoughts here on Nebraska's open practice. The big topic this hour, though, you know, where's Nebraska go in that running back room with Marquis Step out uh, until summer, at least, with a uh, foot issue. And uh, you got a lot of running backs, at least today, watching uh, Nebraska's spring practice. 466 377 825 Five eight six five. Find us on Twitter at Schmidt underscore radio at Herbal Essence for Elijah Herbal and uh, can email Chris at HaleVarsity.com. A lot of homes for sale and uh, maybe you're thinking about making that next move, finding that next next house for your family. West Blue Realty is uh, the way you go. 
and uh, they specialize in residential home sales in Lincoln and surrounding communities to help make uh, that next move uh, really painless for you. For a limited time, you mentioned Hale Varsity. West Blue Realty can provide you up to $1,000 on the closing of your next home purchase. Uh, the numbers to know, Tom Luby is there for West Blue Realty at 402-540-3768. Or Kelly Hofschneider. Kelly's fantastic as well, 402 202 20 312. It pays to work with West Blue Realty. WestBlueRealty.com and get an appointment today. Go see Tom Luby. Go see Kelly Hofschneider, 1120 K Street, Suite 200 in Lincoln. And there's like three or four houses that went up in our neighborhood. The housing market right now is crazy. So my, my brother, he's getting married uh, the end of May. Mm-hmm. So just coming up here. and uh, just, Where's the uh, bachelor party? Uh, going to be up in Omaha. Nice. So uh, I'm I'm trying to convince the rest of the bachelor party to to make the trip over to Council Bluffs and go hit. So the you're casinos. going there? Okay, okay. There's. <laughs> <laughs> I just didn't know where where you were thinking about going in Council Turkey. <laughs> no, only the casinos. I swear. But. Uh, <laughs> Um, but the housing market's ridiculous. And like my dad builds houses, and I'm not going to mention his company name because no free shout outs. Um, <laughs> Even for dad, <laughs> yeah. G- give me a, give me some money for that yeah. shout out. You dad. know what? Dad's saying it'd be gonna be like no free ribs anymore <laughs> either, Elijah. <laughs> yeah, but like just, I mean, ridiculous. I mean, there's only like a hundred houses for sale, or even less in Lincoln right now. Like at the moment, it's like. Super competitive. West Blue, brother. They're that, going to take care of you. That's where you got to go, yeah. yeah. It's like, yeah, if you go look on like Zillow and stuff, there's just nothing available. But- I would, I would put, I love my house. We've got a sweet patio set up. It, we're, it will be in, uh, October will be year four. Mm-hmm. I'd move out of there in two seconds if I could get the number <laughs> that I want for it. Problem is, is talking to, to, to Junior and Mama and the two dogs about, Going into a two bedroom condo. I mean, but the thing is, if you're looking to get the most out of your house, I mean, now, now is. is the time. Yeah. Flip, like flipping ridiculous. it around, and uh, and then going to the next house. Though, I mean, you'll spend because I, of of it being the the type of market it is. Yeah, I did, did that a lot growing up. Though a lot of you did you did a lot of construction stuff, didn't you? Yeah, helping l- kind of re flip a lot of moving into a house, living there for two years. Selling it, moving into a new house, re- renovating it. Yeah. I'm, t- I'm tired of it, but, you know, if I, if I could make some money off it, I'd do it again. <laughs> hey, all good. So uh, go see your friends at West Blue Realty. Rick Pizzo's on the way. We'll talk some uh, Big Ten ball with him. Hail Varsity continues presented by the Nebraska Lottery. Welcome to Hail Varsity Radio, the voice of Husker Nation. Insight, opinion, expertise, with the biggest and best names talking Nebraska across the state. Join the show on Twitter at Hail Varsity and at Schmitz underscore radio. Call in at 402-466-ESPN or 1-800-825-5865. Here's Chris Schmitz. Back to it. It's Hour 2. It's Hail Varsity Radio presented by the Nebraska Lottery. Chris Schmidt, Elijah Herbal. Check in with Rick Pizzo. Big Ten Buffet coming up. Well, uh, here's some more thoughts uh, post-practice here as that was open to the media for Nebraska. And uh, some wow moments. We'll save your bets. Not to make too much of it, but, man, he looked good streaking down the field, catching a long one from Adrian Martinez. But Deontay Williams and Ty Robinson, two, uh, two names to listen for here. Coming up as uh, they spoke about uh, the direction of the defense and some of the changes and uh, progress they uh, they want to make. Numbers to get in uh, today here on Hale Varsity Radio, 466-3776-466-3776-800-825-5865. can email chris at halevarsity.com. And uh, also find us and follow us on Twitter at Schmidt underscore radio at Herbal Essence for Elijah Herbal. We'll uh, get some thoughts here on spring football here in a moment with uh, Rick Pizzo, Big Ten Buffet. So spring balls on our mind and uh, the topic of running back, the issue for Nebraska. We say hi to Rick Pizzo, Big Ten Buffet at BTN Rick Pizzo on Twitter is where you find him. Rick, how's your Wednesday? What's good, man? Wednesday is okay, Chris, but Monday and Tuesday were fantastic. Golf season has arrived in Chicago. It was 70 and sunny the last couple of days. 
had a little bit of a breather, and I know we're here to talk about work stuff, but, <laughs> man, to be able to get it on the links and start springtime in early April, what a bonus. Man, you got game, though. You can you can swing the sticks. I, I know you're very humble, in all honesty, but, man, you're you're really good at it. So you always enjoy your golf rounds. Uh, I, I played Saturday. I got... Man, I got my lunch money taken, uh, not not literally, but just by the course. It just warped me. But, again, we were out on the links before youth baseball started up. So, yeah, it's always good. Golf season's here. We'll get to some Masters in a minute. I'm glad you got to go swing the clubs. Our focus has been uh, spring football for Nebraska. And, you know, some discouraging news for Nebraska with Marquis Stepp, the transfer from SC. He has been lost for the spring. He had to have a procedure done on, on his foot. And uh, he's a guy that Nebraska was hoping to lean on. Rick, as you look at Nebraska here in the Frost era, what's been your takeaway with the team's running game? What, what's, what's a label or word that comes to mind with Nebraska's rushing attack? Yeah, I think it's a little bit of unknown because I think you're trying to figure out what do you want and, and what can you really expect from a run game in an offense which is going to be high tempo, high pace, put so much on the quarterback. And I think when folks look at either the run and shoot or the spread offenses, they immediately think of the quarterback and the wide receivers. And you kind of forget about the running backs. But you think about Ohio State, it's a perfect example, right? They ran that spread offense with Urban Meyer. And I know you relied so much on JT Barrett and critical down and distance situations. But think about the running backs that came through. I mean, without the play of guys like Carlos Hyde and Ezekiel Elliott and Trey Sermon going for, what, 500 yards combined in the championship game in the semifinal, that spread offense doesn't work. So I think, unfortunately, to too many people, it's an afterthought. I don't think it's an afterthought to Scott. I certainly don't think that's the case. But you need to have a running back that can be a game-breaker because then that completely opens things up for a guy like Adrian or any other quarterback who can take off when everything else is not there because that linebacker's eyes are staring into the backfield because the safety can't cheat. My dog clearly agrees with me, as you can hear him barking outside. But that, that's the scenario that you have is a running back needs to be the setup guy in that offense. And from time to time, like Ohio State showed over the past decade, the running back needs to be the star as well. Are you just teasing Otto talking football as now we're into Listen, spring man, and we're so Otto far away? Football. He is so mad that I'm as happy as I am that it's golf season. He is equally angry because that means that his guy, who's usually outside throwing the ball within hours a day, <laughs> the links hours a day, and he's kind of sitting there with the ball in his mouth with nobody to throw it to him. And clearly that's not nearly it. That's all right. No, it's good to to get Otto on the show. As many years as we've done this, I mean, uh, Otto's felt left out, so we're getting Otto some some airtime on Hale Varsity. No, you're right. And and Nebraska, they've had a feature back. I don't want to say that they haven't in the Frost era because Ozigbo really had a a good finish to his career. And when Mills was healthy and they gave him the football, Man, he did well against some pretty high-profile teams, but Nebraska right now is trying to find that next guy. And, Rick, as you look at some of the other programs, and you just hit on Ohio State, I mean, Iowa's had good run games. Michigan State, when they've been rolling, they've had a, a, a back. Uh, and and I look kind of down the, the rest of Wisconsin, clearly. I mean, they, they always find a running back to, to lean on. Can you Can you go as far as you want in the Big Ten with running back by committee? You can, but not at the schools that you mentioned. Now, you mentioned Iowa, Michigan State, Wisconsin, right? Mm -hmm. So when those schools were having great success, and Iowa, Wisconsin still now, they're not running the same kind of offense that Nebraska wants to run. So those schools, I don't think, could have quite as much success running back by committee. I mean, now, there are exceptions. I mean, when Wisconsin has, you know, Monte Ball and James White and right. Melvin Gordon on the same team, as Nebraska fans know, and you run for a million yards in the championship game, then sure. <laughs> now, at Nebraska, I actually think it can work if you're able to have other guys that can do multiple things. And unfortunately, the departure of Juan Dale, I think that's a guy. You have that Percy Harvin mold, right? And I hate to, again, I'm hearkening back to an old Urban Meyer team, but that Florida team had some good running backs and really good quarterbacks, 
but they also had another guy that you could spread out and move. And I think that's what Scott really wants. Mm -hmm. He wants to have a couple of guys, a running back or two running backs by committee, but also have that kind of player, that flanker, wide receiver guy, who you can put in the backfield, who you can put out wide, because that confuses defenses. It covers up a lot of mistakes. It covers up perhaps an inequity on the line. It covers up a quarterback that's not having a great day. I think that's really why that departure hurts so much, because it would allow a play caller like Scott to do so many different things if you have that in place for a couple of years and you're able to complement it with a running back, even by committee, if those guys aren't hurt. Rick Pizzo's with us. Big Ten Buffet, Hale Varsity Radio, at, Rick, at BT and Rick Pizzo on Twitter. Rick, uh, you know, what's, what's the jump you think you're going to see? And I know it's spring ball, but you're going to see from Adrian. Well, I think it has to be seismic because I think we expected a jump after year one, and that was perhaps – Maybe it was unfair, Chris, honestly. Mm -hmm. I think he was so good, and I think Scott put a lot of pressure on him, maybe too much, and I think we did too. Mm -hmm. And then I think then you get into a year where you're having competition, which I think is really good for quarterbacks. Now, I didn't necessarily love the way the competition was handled last year as far as this starts yours, this starts yours, we're going to go back and forth. And I understand there's always competition and there's always motivation in that. Scott knows his players much better than I do. But now it's your team. Now, again, there are no questions. You are going to be the guy. You have guys around you now, and you have this system memorized. So I think, and I think you would agree with this, the problem last year was that inconsistency where you'd see one game and you'd say, he's got it. Mm -hmm. It's here. This is what we are going to see for the next year and a half. And the very next game, it disappears. Mm -hmm. And you're scratching your head saying, how can this be the same guy I saw at Purdue playing against Northwestern? They're two different guys. Mm -hmm. So I think that's what you need to see. You need to see the same guy week in and week out. And maybe not looking over the shoulder makes a difference this year. I think you're right on with, uh, okay, freshman year, big wow, and then you've got expectations and you feel those expectations and Colorado derailed a lot. You go into next year and it's re- I mean, quarterbacks are special, man. And they're special mentally in a good way because they, they, they run the show, but in the same way, yeah. uh, confidence can, can be very, very fragile at that spot just because of just like a hockey goalie. Right. Same thing. Right. Just because of how much you put into it. So, you know, I look at Adrian's turnovers, and we've harped on that for forever. I just, I just think it's apples and oranges, and I think they're trying to get back to the the same level maybe they had around him his freshman year. I think the O line can be good, but they don't have a running back like Ozigbo, and they don't have a guy like Stan or or Spielman. Those are two wide receivers, and you still had Stoll playing yep. for you. I just don't think he had the help last year. Or guys weren't up up to speed. So I think, yeah, he needed to be more consistent. But I think the offense around him didn't do him any favors. No, I agree. And, and yet, you, you know, multiple injuries to Wandale. And so, I mean, so many guys, mm-hmm. right? So many important guys were hurt uh, offensively. And you weren't sure what you were going to get every week. I think there were some questions, too. Like, listen, J.D. put up some great numbers, right? But I think there were some, some questions about the want-to factor, mm-hmm. Uh, every single Saturday. And I think that could bleed in as well. I I think one thing that needs to be talked about this year, and I think Scott's probably tired of talking about it, but if you're the one that puts it out there, it deserves to be talked about. And he talked a lot publicly about getting the culture to where he wanted it to be and that it would take three years, a full recruiting cycle, right, to get the guys out who didn't fit and let the guys that want to transfer go. That's this year, Chris. Mm Mm-hmm. That's this year. Those guys who you didn't want, the culture killers, the guy who didn't understand what Nebraska football, those guys are gone. You have your guys now. So show us that this year the culture that you knew, that you believed in, that created one of the greatest dynasties in college and has been gone basically for two decades, do we have those guys now? Are those the guys that are in Lincoln? I think we know a lot. I think we answer a lot of that question by the end of this year. Rick, well, while we're talking just a little bit about you know Martinez and all that, uh, 
where do you think Nebraska actually stands in terms of the, the talent of their, their starting quarterback in, in 2021? I mean, a lot of Husker fans had a lot of confidence in, in Adrian Martinez after that freshman season, as you said earlier. Um, but is it still well-founded, or are there just you know numerous other quarterbacks in the Big Ten who, who you think have, have more talent than him? No, it's absolutely well-founded because when he plays to his potential, you could make an argument. If you look at the quarterbacks that are gone now, right, yeah. with Justin Fields moving on, you look at the quarterbacks that are coming back, Dave Ramsey, Northwestern, I mean, a guy who played one year with the Wildcats and put up good numbers. You look at the guys that were there and now the guys who aren't going to be there. I mean, there are questions at quarterback, even, even places that have returning guys with a ton of talent, like Graham Mertz. He blew us away in week one, right? But then there were all sorts of questions throughout the rest of the year, not just COVID-related. I mean, there are very few programs in the country who have a quarterback who stays for at least three years at that program is outstanding. And if you have that guy, you're Ohio State or you're Clemson or you're Alabama and you're in the national championship hunt. I mean, that is not a commonality. So – if you want to compare Adrian talent-wise, potential-wise, to the rest of the Big Ten, you could make an argument that heading into this year, could he be the best quarterback in the league? Why not? Mm-hmm. He could absolutely be the best quarterback in the league. Could he, if he shows as much inconsistency as he has over the past couple of years, could he be middle of the pack? Absolutely. And that, to me, is what makes Nebraska such a fascinating case study in Big Ten football and building with a new coach in year four and building to where you're trying to get to with the first full group of guys that are your guys in a division that I'll be dead honest with you, fellas, I think is right for the taking this year. I think the Big Ten West is absolutely right. You want it, go out and get it. Go play better football and take care of the football and be good on special teams. Take a step defensively and uh, find an identity offensively. That's a long to-do list, but it's doable. Rick Pizzo's with us, Hale Varsity Radio, Big Ten Network. Rick, uh, about a minute and a half here, not as much time as we need for golf, but that's what we have. Your thought here on, on the Masters this weekend, give me a win, give me a place, give me a show. I mean, you'll get your usual suspects, right? I mean, I think Justin Johnson's the guy that's perfectly designed for the course. He showed it in November. Justin Spieth, or Jordan Spieth, mm-hmm. I should say, to have him back and playing well. I think Justin Thomas is a guy that obviously this course sets up well for him. If I'm going to give you a couple of dark horses, mm-hmm. I really like the way that a lefty named Brian Harmon has been playing as okay. of late. He's a guy who nobody talks about, but he loves Augusta. He gets around Augusta really well. People forget how well Sung J M played last mm-hmm. year. He's just in his second Masters. Young guy out of Korea, but I think he is a phenomenal player, and I think he has a very good chance. But at the end of the day, man, it is really hard to pick against Dustin Johnson the way that he's playing. Uh, I know that a lot of folks say Bryson DeChambeau can overpower this golf course. I'm just, I just until he shows me that at mm-hmm. Augusta, I'm not ready to buy. Uh, I mean, I think the, the heavy money goes on DJ, but uh, as always at Augusta, first couple of rounds, you'll see a couple of guys who are on the leaderboard and you're scratching your head saying, where did those guys come from? I think Brian Harmon, I think Matt Kuchar, a couple of guys that maybe make a little bit of a run that you don't expect. Rick Pizzo with us, Big Ten Buffet, a little Masters thoughts. And Rick, uh, enjoy uh, wonderful weather in Chicago. Keep them clubs dusted off and go hit them far and straight and, and say hi to Otto again. Thanks for a few minutes with us. My pleasure, man. I'd have loved being on uh, radio with you guys. He's now got to make sure he doesn't have too big of a head after that. Uh, there we go. Well, Rick, take care, man. See ya. Take care. <laughs> there he is, Rick Pizzo, Big Ten Buffet. Good to get his take on Nebraska. Some great insight there with the running game with Adrian. And, yeah, consistency, right? You need it from the skill spots. Got to find that running back. And the step news, uh, discouraging, not only for the staff and the players, but – for Nebraska fans, we'll see uh, how well he can come back. We'll hear from Deontay Williams, Ty Robinson, their thoughts on this defense and the culture. Hail Varsity continues. And we're back. Fellas, I think we could listen to the radio listen? On Hail Varsity Radio, presented by the Nebraska Lottery. Yes! That's awesome! That's awesome stuff from Rick Pizzo, not only on the Masters, but his take on Big Red Football. 
and uh, can find that ESPN Lincoln.com also at ESPN Lincoln on Twitter the on demand sections podcast give us a follow give us a like give us a review and uh, we're daily here Hail Varsity Radio but it's uh, posted by Elijah and the crew at Herdat immediately following the show so uh, if you catch us on your time that's all good uh, Spotify iTunes or Google Play, where you can find the Hale Varsity Radio podcast and just a slew of really awesome podcasts. Greg Smith, Derek Peterson, Aaron Sorensen, Brandon Vogel, uh, just uh, an incredible setup. Jacob Padilla, Damon Benning, uh, Schick and Nick. So, yeah, get to the Herdat page and uh, get those uh, ears smiling. So, open practice today. The the bets goes for a big old touchdown on the uh, – the long pass from from Adrian makes a, a lot of Nebraska fans smile. Uh, you, you're dealing with uh, the fact that there's no marquee step at running back till summer because of a foot issue. Uh, you're wondering who can step up. Gabe Irvin, that's that's positive news for Nebraska, right, Elijah? With all right, where's Nebraska going to lead? Because it's going to be you just want it all to work, right? You had Adrian here. Adrian's been here going into year four now, and and what do you have around him? You feel like you've built the line to be as good as it can be. It, and it's it was a lot of young guys last year, but they got some experience, so they'll be a little bit older. We know they're talented. Let's put it together. You've got a good receiving room, but you still need Omar Manning practicing, not watching like he was today. You've got uh, Martin, the, the transfer that – is pretty big and athletic. You've got Toure that that has kind of not only done it at a different level, but has wowed some guys on the team. And, oh, yeah, by the way, he's been a good leader by example. That's how you do it. That's how you want to go about your business. You've got the tight end room that you feel good about. And then you've got a young guy in bets that can really stretch the field on top of a guy like Alante Brown and Nixon in the slot that can also make some things work. So you've got pieces there, but to, to make it all go, you need that, that ground game from a back or two to make it happen. Defensively, let's focus there for a little bit. As uh, you had Ty Robinson and Deontay Williams talk a little bit after uh, their practice session wrapped up and let's hear from Deontay Williams I mean the super senior the guy that's going to have his master's degree in uh, financial planning that's incredible Deontay one of our favorite people to to talk to and and kind of get insight from he's a leader he's passionate he he's one of those guys that can really take the football away so Deontay was asked today you know why why are you coming back and if you're a Nebraska fan you love this answer I felt like this team that we got right now could do way more, and I want to, and I, and we want to show the country that we we are better than what everybody else think we are. So I felt like just coming back, leaving a footprint, leaving a mark on and on and on and on, and from, from here, uh, 20 years from now, because my son he watching me play right now. So when he, when it's his time to uh, be a Husker and play football, you can see what Daddy have done. So. That's why I chose to come back. So, look, there's other guys that I like playing with that are good. We feel like we're on the verge of something. Let's let's pay it forward. Let's really set the tone and, and really be something special. Those are all great reasons to come back if you're Deontay Williams. And it's really selfless. I mean, he could have been picked or signed a deal in the NFL. He's a good enough athlete and... Uh, there's enough film on him to to get a look, right? And we, we go back to Russ Landy, the NFL insider, former scout, and he's like, look, he thinks there'll be three to four Nebraska guys picked this year. If Deontay would have put his name in, I think he could have been another guy picked. I think he's talented enough, but he's coming back for some of those reasons. There's there's a lot of doubt out there about this football program and, and what they can do, and they're, they're really – feeding off of that with a chip on their shoulder and it's probably to a player it's probably part with the coaching staff and that's okay doubt me great I'll show you I'll prove you wrong and and what I love about his answer is is he kind of gets it is that like anything you do in life whether it's a job whether it's school it's the football team you play no matter what you do you're gonna leave a legacy And, and and he's saying I want my legacy to be a good one not a bad one um and not a forgotten legacy I guess because 
regardless of whether or not the team wins next year, he's still going to leave his legacy being here for six years. There's a legacy that he has left, and he's saying, if I'm going to put in all this work, I'm going to make sure that my legacy is a good one. I, I love that. That's the mentality I want in, in the Husker football team. You know, there's doubt. And when it comes to, you know, what, what are the expectations here of Nebraska? Deontay is like, look, people probably think we're five and seven, six and six, seven and five. And more from Deontay here specifically, kind of that leadership role and what he's set. Again, the culture word comes up. It's playing out just like, because the culture, the culture was already set. So I'm still here. So I'll make sure that culture still stay here when I'm gone. So other than that, they watch me practice. They watch me watch film. They see me here, in here every day. They know that it's just not going to come to you. You got to work hard every day, day by day. I'm good. I'm talented. I got to bring it every day. That's important. I think Nebraska's recruited well. I think they've brought in a lot of talent. What's the mentality with some of that talent that's been brought in? Is it let's go do this every day or this will just be like high school where I can out-athlete everybody? And that ain't how it works in in college football. That's not how it works in the Big Ten. Guys got to learn that. And some guys learn it at different points in their career than others. If you got a guy that's doing it by example and also feels comfortable enough to be vocal – I have no worries about the secondary because of their position coach and the guys they've got in that room. Uh, It's not necessarily that way throughout the team yet because, listen, you've got an experienced group that's proven it and been a strength of the football team for the last year and a half or so. Last side here from Deontay Williams here uh, opened up a little bit here about his disappointment. That's putting it uh, in the PG term uh, for – this team and not going to a bowl and guys deciding not to play in a bowl game. Yeah, it was very hard, especially guys for me, you know, want more film out there for the NFL scouts and stuff like that. But other than that, it is what it is. But we got to, we got to change that. You know, that's something we got to change here, deep inside here. You know, like it's a culture thing. They didn't want to play. Some guys didn't want to play. Some guys opted out. Some guys, you know, so. But, hey, do, do what's best for them. But other than that, clearly still bothered by that and he should be I mean, personally he wanted to showcase against somebody he hadn't been to a bowl game yet and some guys were just like yeah, i'm good and and that that has rubbed a number of guys competitors on this team wrong and they're still taking it with them yeah and it's i i, I get both sides of it like as a unl student it was a tough semester last semester and, and by the end of it all i wanted was to be done but if i mean just to use my life as an example, if you would have texted me and said, hey, the Huskers are playing in a bowl game, you want to come down and watch the bowl game? I'd be like, hell yeah, I will. I'll come do a show. I'll come do all the work necessary to come down and do that. It's been since the Music City game. (laughs) You're you're working on a bit of a drought. Yeah, I don't care if I got to go down there and sit in a hotel room for two weekends and uh, like whatever it takes. Like I want to get down there and I want to, A, do this show Mm -hmm. because it's what I want to do. These guys want to play football, right? So go, go, yeah, go play in a football game, go get some more experience and get another, another challenge of the way. Whenever it's clear that, you know, your boss, quote unquote, your head coach wanted to go play. Let's hear from Ty Robinson a little bit here. And and he's a guy that playing at a high level and uh, Robinson spent some time kind of recalling what, you know, what, what he has gathered, what he has learned uh, through that, uh, that first season in the big 10. Last season, yeah, that uh, it takes 11 to play defense, it takes 11 to win, uh, and then it takes 22 to win a, a football game. You can't just have one side of the ball doing good and the other side not good enough. So I learned that teamwork's the best thing, and then we've actually seen that out in the practice too. I mean, we're just becoming closer and closer together, and we're actually starting to make plays, and we're, we're starting to glide off each other. It just looks smooth. It looks really good. It's, it's, a, lot, it's a lot more fun too. So just a better feel here. And, and a lot more fun. I like that. Yeah, well, football can be fun, right, says uh, – uh, says Coach Herman Boone. <laughs> Football is fun, right? Right? Uh, yes, sir. No, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, no, the grind isn't, but the reward absolutely is. Uh, more from, from Ty Robinson here and the expectation for that, that D-line group uh, and the urgency to take a jump. Yeah, and I, I think that's possible. I mean, some some might think it's a big jump, but for me, I see it as just a normal jump. Uh, it's just this is the thing we do. I think it's the way that our culture has been changed. It, the culture is finally becoming to what it what they've been saying it was in the beginning. 
it's all here. We finally got all the right pieces, I think, and it's only going to get better from here. So you're going to see a totally new uh, team next year. Last thought here from from um, Ty Robinson here on, you know, why guys came back and what that adds to the defense. I think they saw the potential of this defense. I mean, I feel like I, even though Ohio State didn't look good, our defense played freaking phenomenal for the first game against Ohio State. <laughs> I mean, it only got better from there. Yeah, we had to hiccup against Illinois, but I feel like after that, all that one incident, I feel like every game we we came to battle. And I, like I said earlier, it doesn't take 11 guys. It takes all 22 to win a game. So I didn't have the, the Williams comment in there. I'll, I'll try and find that for tomorrow. But just just about th- the feeling and you know what? It's it's okay to to hear whispers. It's okay to to know what's out there if you're a player or a team. And listen, you can't be us against the world all the time. I know Polini's era that that was a, a energy draining, zapping mentality. But the whole revenge, something to prove, you doubt me, I'm gonna show you type feel, it can work. It can work for a while. I just don't know that you can live on it. But if you're Nebraska and you're going into year four and you failed to meet your own expectations and you, you know you've got some guys that, that are getting it or now do get it, it's, it's okay to, to dig into what you got to dig into to, to get the best performance. I, I'm not going to judge on, okay, well, you don't think we can do it. Well, screw you. I'll show you. Whatever it takes, man. I mean, that's kind of, if you're a Nebraska football fan, I don't think you really care what's the motivation as long as the result's uh, better than what's what's happened in the last few seasons. And I'm going to agree with Ty Robinson. It really did feel like all games last year, except for that Illinois game, that the defense did bring it. They did play with that chip on their shoulder, but did the offense bring it every single game? I'd say no. I, I mean, offense they, there were been the games a, and they did. It, it they was, brought it against Penn State. Uh, they brought it, I'd say, against Rutgers, but did they bring it in seven other games that year against Northwestern? They didn't bring it. Iowa, they brought it for like a half. Well, they, they brought it for yards, <laughs> but not points, right? I mean, the offense is... Offense and special teams got to got to get it together. They're working to do so. Hail Varsity continues Wednesday edition. We're presented by the Nebraska Lottery. He's in his 30s, but sounds like he was born with a stogie in one hand and a brew in the other. Now, say my name. It's Schmitty on Hail Varsity Radio. I got the body of a taut preteen Swedish boy. Back into it at Tail Bar City Radio, presented by the Nebraska Lottery. Time for a Jock Doc Wednesday, Lincoln Orthopedic Center. Dr. Ben Woodhead with us. Dr. Ben, you got your baseball cap on. How are you? I'm doing great. Yourself trying to enjoy this weather. Yeah, right. Uh, give me a poncho, man. Uh, <laughs> it should warm up uh, for the weekend. And, you know, uh, one part of the country that's always fantastic and beautiful, San Diego. And one of the favorite guys I like watching is uh, Fernando Tatis Jr. He's on the 10-day injured list, but he's not going to need s- surgery. Uh, now, I've swung hard, but I've never swung so hard I, I injured my shoulder. Maybe that's why I'm not in the show. But let's uh, <laughs> let's dive in a little bit here to, to what exactly happened with Fernando Tatis Jr. Yeah, so it sounds like he had a partial dislocation or subluxation of the shoulder. And, you know, that's a you know, a more uncommon way to have this type of injury. Um, usually it's more of a contact type of injury. Oftentimes with wrestling, football, arm kind of gets caught in an awkward way above your head and you'll kind of sublux out. But um, those guys swing with such vicious force that he obviously swung enough to where um, subluxated his shoulder. So a little more of an uncommon type of way to, to, way to partially dislocate your shoulder, but um, certainly can happen nonetheless. Well, the exams showed a slight uh, labrum tear. That's consistent with the sub- subluxation, uh, non-surgical injury. So when we talk about the, the region of the shoulder, and I'm just trying to go through it in my, in my mind here after the swing, as I also, as I watch it, he exited in the third inning. And, you know, when, when, we, when we line up at the plate and dig in and, and take our hacks, it's, it's a fluid motion, but there's so much torque 
generated that I, I, I guess I can see this happening. You laid out as to, to how it's a, a little different, but uh, tell me a little bit here, the, the, the treatment, the inflammation, and when it comes to just continued stability with that shoulder. Yeah, so the shoulder is a very interesting joint. It's not like your hip and your knee where you kind of have this constrained joint where it's very stable. Um, the shoulder is stable, but, you know, it's the greatest motion in our body. So um, it really doesn't have much restricting its motion. You know, if you think about it, you can reach above your head, behind your back. And so that's the beauty of the shoulder and throwing and being able to use the shoulder like we do. But when you have an injury like this, um, you have a bumper that is around the socket of the of the shoulder and so that's kind of what keeps the shoulder in its joint and so basically the definition or of a subluxation or a partial dislocation is where in whatever way it happens that shoulder will basically pop over um the edge of that labrum Mm. which is providing the stability and it can tear um and so certainly if you don't dislocate where you have to actually where you get stuck out and have to have somebody put it back into place but if you pop over the edge you can tear the labrum um, and once you have a tear like that within the shoulder you can get bleeding you get inflammation you get swelling um, and oftentimes it will heal itself with time and it doesn't require surgery and so that's a best case scenario for him watching Tatis Jr. the right-handed batter he swings through the bat comes out of his right hand, and the, the, the follow-through is with his left. So the top of the bat touches kind of the back left shoulder blade, and, and that's where the, the motion was kind of almost like a, like a windmill, but a side-to-side mm-hmm. windmill, and that's where it came over the top, and then he crumpled to the ground. Uh, no bueno, man. That was no good. From a range of motion standpoint, you know, he, once he gets back from the 10-day uh, injury list, uh, I'm thinking about him in the field as well. Will this limit him in the field as well as how careful has he got to be back in the box? You know, long-term, it shouldn't limit his motion at all. Um, he is going to be stiff because they'll likely immobilize him and then gradually get him into physical therapy right away. Um, but after an injury like that, you know, the most common um, complication or I guess short-term outcome that you have is you have stiffness just from the nature of the injury. So what he's going to be working against is trying to get that motion back, trying to get his full function back. Um, and, you know, whether this is the first time he's had a subluxation event or he's had anything in the past, these oftentimes – they can be rehabbed as long as he doesn't have another dislocation type of event and he can get back to activities without limitations. Well, he can buy plenty of ice. A 14-year, $340 million deal is what he signed in February. Uh, Fernando Tatis Jr., we're talking about him and uh, that uh, slight dislocation of his shoulder, just a 10-day injury list for him. And uh, Dr. Ben Woodhead with us, Lincoln Orthopedic Center at Jock Doc Wednesday. Talk to me a little bit here about when something like this happens, the sublocation, that partial dislocation of the joint. Is it is it possible that the, the, the swing was kind of the straw here that broke the camel's back, so to speak? Do you think there may have been some pre-existing or some, some mileage on that left shoulder leading up to the at-bat with his career? Yeah, that's certainly an option. You know, once if he had dislocated in the past or if he had injured his shoulder in the past, it certainly would lower that threshold for him to get injured. And so we know um, from studies that these people that they dislocate prior um, to an injury like this, you know, it, it just it makes them a lot more susceptible to an injury like this. Like I said, this is an uncommon way um, to sublux or dislocate your shoulder. And so it certainly would um kind of lead you to believe that he might have had an incident or an injury like this in the past that maybe led to it or certainly could have just been a perfect storm and a perfect type of scenario where where he subluxed during this incident you know looking a little bit more in fernando's history he he did leave a game late in spring training with left shoulder discomfort after making a backhanded play uh in the field at shortstop and then he, he got back two days later. He's been dealing with uh, left shoulder discomfort since his minor league days uh, and, and since rookie ball. So he's had some shoulder issues. And, you know, that shortstop position also, you better be really durable because of, of the range you need to have in the, in the hole there. 
Absolutely. Yeah, and, you know, it's probably something that's been nagging him. You know, it's hard to completely take that from his past, mm-hmm. but certainly if he's had issues in the past, it's certainly something that would continue to be a problem, which would make sense why it would have taken – you know, a more uncommon type of mechanism to uh, pop it out. So last thought here, Dr. Ben, on on Fernando Tatis Jr. and his shoulder. What's this going to do with him power-wise? Say he gets cleared, he's back. Will it take a little bit of time for him to get back to normal? Or once he's cleared, he should be good? You know, I think they'll clear him once he's able to start doing things. You know, these guys we've talked in the past, you know, he's going to recover quickly. He's going to get his strength back. Um, The biggest issue going forward is some of that mental block as he's had a partial dislocation or subluxation, you know, now, you know, that's one of the hardest things for athletes to get over is anytime you've had that happen before, you somewhat limit yourself and not want to get in that position again. And so that's why oftentimes some of these athletes – you know, they feel unstable with their shoulder. And so in order to get past that mental block, if they're slipping out, sometimes these um, athletes have to actually undergo surgery to tighten up the shoulder so they don't feel that sensation. Yeah, you don't want him uh, not swinging as hard as he can or making contact with that strength uh, because of, of, of his fin- just fantastic power numbers. Dr. Ben Woodhead with us, Lincoln Orthopedic Center at Jock Doc Wednesday. Fernando Tatis Jr., our topic today. Dr. Ben, have a great rest of the week. Thanks for a few minutes today. You as well, Chris. Have a good week. Miss us? Come here, brother. Give me a hug. Bring it in for the real thing. We're on call for you. Catch the podcast at HailVarsity.com, the ESPN Lincoln app, or download them on iTunes. Saddle up, partner. Back to Hail Varsity Radio. One final time tomorrow on the show, we'll run down Gary Barnett. Uh, we'll check in with Brandon Vogel. Pride of Chicago's Burke's best bets, Danny Burke, is... Thoughts on the Masters and then uh, former Husker, we love him, Matt Verzel. Verzel is going to be with us. Get Verzel's take on some spring football thoughts. 466-3776-466-3776-800-825-5865. Can email Chris at HaleVarsity.com and find us on Twitter at Schmidt underscore radio. Chris Schmidt at Herbal Essence for Elijah Herbal. And are you, uh, when do you bounce out are you on a hiatus starting so tomorrow or i know you're on friday saturday but are you are you are you camping are you camping or what are you doing so it is a early start friday morning i Mm -hmm. have class to go to tomorrow so i'm going to be going to class and then i believe liar i'm not lying to you it's all class via zoom but it is class i got to go to Mm -hmm. um so that's tomorrow and then friday morning we're going to get a we're shooting for a 4 30 a.m start so where, where are you going I'm getting there. I'm okay. getting there. I'm setting up the suspense, going down to Oxford, Mississippi. Oh, that's, so yes, yes. That's a, a 12-hour drive down. So, so you're voluntarily driving to Mississippi, but you are going to uh, a lovely spot in Mississippi, Oxford. You're yeah. season, you're season baseball. Yeah, and it's uh, probably going to be one of the best baseball series in like the country this year. It's going to be number two Ole Miss or number three Ole Miss, one of the two, against number two or three Arkansas. So it's a top five matchup. Get to go see Dave Van Horn. Mm-hmm. Get to go see Oxford, Mississippi, the lovely, uh, the lovely city of Oxford. You've been there, though. It, it's, it's what is it, like 40,000? Uh, it's a little. I, I'd say it's 40,000 in like during summer break whenever all the college students go home, and they get up to about 60,000, I think, during the uh, during the year. And it's a... Uh, it, it's not like a Hastings or a Grand Island. It's definitely a bigger feel than that, but it is, it's very much, very much so a college town. It's pleasant. You are going to stay hydrated with your friends down there. Yes. And I was looking, unfortunately, master's tickets are way out of my price range this year um, because well, they're so limited. limited yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sounds like your baseball seats are nuts. But, yeah, but the baseball seats aren't, it's right now, uh, the general admission tickets are going for like 70 or 80 bucks a pop. Um, because it is such a good matchup and because uh, they also have limited capacity down there. Uh, so still trying to get uh, the the eight of us that are going down uh, a, uh, a a seat for each of us in the student section for at least one of the games. I, I think we're going to all have seats in student section for Saturday. We're uh, still trying to get seats for Friday night. And then Sunday we're just not going to go because we're going to be watching the Masters. But. No, that's fine. That's all good. Should be a good weekend. And then Monday we're back on the road, 12 hours back here, and I should be back here I, I've talked with Damon whether he wants me to fill in for him on Tuesday after he does like all sure, weekend, sure. but no, dude. I mean, get Wednesday. get plenty of pictures and have a good old time because you've been down for football before, right? 
Uh, yes, didn't actually make it into the football game, but was down there for you, football. You were at the Grove. Well, yeah, they didn't bother to buy a ticket, and this was two years ago when Ole Miss was terrible. That's so. fine. No, you, you did what you needed to do down at <laughs> Ole Miss, and, and you, which means you tailgated. Mm-hmm. Now, did you pack a sport coat? Did not. Did not. Okay, uh, that's fine, because people dress up down there. People do dress up down there, but that's all like the frat dudes, and like gotcha. that. That's I, I stay away from the frat culture. That, that's fine. It's a, whatever works. You got a mustache rocking. You can do what you want. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, the, the only problem is we, we have a little... I was like going down, I'm like, oh, we're going to have nice weather down in the south. We got rain in the forecast. Well, you'll still be uh, in Ole Miss country. Uh, reminder to buckle up here. 70% of people in fatal crashes in Nebraska not wearing a seatbelt. Uh, 60%, I tell you what, uh, reduced that uh, risk of fatal injury by buckling up. Brought to you by the Nebraska Department of Highway Safety Office. We'll talk to you again tomorrow.